Hi there, uh, Noah Bradley again. Uh, thank you for joining us. It's week four and we're going to do our next tool today. We already covered the pencil and the compass and the utility knife, so we really got that pencil covered. We have a sharp pencil and it's ready to work. And uh, if you saw last week, uh, one of the features of a utility knife was to, was to good, do a good mark on a board before we cut it. And you probably saw me whip out the tool that is, will be the tool of this week. And that's the, the sliding T-square. And I, I love the sliding T-square. Uh, this one's actually one that I've had for 30, 40 years. They still sell them, they still make them. Uh, it never fails though that if you go on most job sites nowadays that carpenters don't use them like they used to, that they use what is known as a speed square. And uh, speed square does, is, is nice and it's, uh, it's, it's not as fragile as this or can be knocked out of alignment as, as well as a sliding T-square. Uh, but uh, so that's, I think that's the reason why everybody goes with a, with a speed square. And, uh, but the speed square only does two things. It gives you a 90 degree angle and a 45 angle degree. And that's about it. Whereas the, the sliding T-square will do, will do both of those, plus it's adjustable. And uh, that's, I think that that's a real handy feature. I use it, I use it a lot myself. If you're setting the uh, gauge on the table saw and you gotta go for exactly, say, four inches, you can slide it over to four and lock it into place. And then you don't have to really take your tape measure over the table saw. You've already got exactly what it is. Or if you want to uh, mark a board and you want to you want to you want to cut it down to a narrower width and say you want to do it to four inches. Let me get let me get a sample board. Okay. So if you want to take it and you want to mark a board, then uh, you slide it down to four inches or something like that. And then you can just uh, put your pencil on the end here. Get my trusty pencil. One second, please. Okay. So you take your pencil and then you just you can just run it right on the side of this, and uh, and then slide it and the pencil up and down the board, and then you'll create your line on there. So it, it's a wonderful versatile thing. The one thing I would look for in uh, in shopping for them, this is a this is an old Stanley. You probably have to get on eBay to do it. And by the way, you can really find some fancy antique ones here. Just make sure that they're square when you check them. And one way to check for square, if you want to get an antique one, is that you would draw a line like that and then draw it like that. And if both of them, if the line is in the same spot, then you know it's, it's straight and true. Whereas if it's a little bit off, it's going to tell when you flip. Um, but uh, anyway, you can get some new ones. Uh, there are some fancy ones out there. There's some cheap ones out there. The only thing I would uh, dissuade you from is, is do your best that this is metal and this is metal. And if the knob is plastic, that's okay. But uh, you, don't want, you don't want this out of plastic. So uh, that's, that's it. So anyway, this is our most expensive tool. This is as much as the three before. Uh, you're probably looking at uh, 12 to 20 bucks for this. Uh, to get an antique, you're probably looking at 30 or 40. And uh, I imagine there's some fancy things out of there that are custom made or whatever else you can spend up to $100 on or whatever else. But the more expensive the tool you buy, chances are the more chance it's going to walk off or suddenly disappear on you. So uh, this, is a, this is just a great one here. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, we'll see you next week.